Hello and welcome to the latest anime news for the week ending May 16th, 2020. The long tease announcement of Jun Maeda's next anime project has come this week. Huzzah! Key, Aniplex, and PA Works held a live stream presentation this week to announce their new anime project titled The Day I Became a God. Pretty good title. The original TV series will premiere this October. The anime will be animated at PA Works. Maeda is credited with the original work and as screenwriter for the series. Very exciting. Naga is returning from many other key and visual arts projects as original character designer. Um, PA Works noted on Twitter that since the project has already been in development for some time, the audio is pre-recorded. Presumably that means the project won't face the delays that are so widespread right now, at least in the voice acting department. But who knows? Um, I think we can safely say that based on that. The promotional video for the series mentions 2010's Angel Beats and 2015's Charlotte, then reads, quote, 2020, the hands of time are set in motion again. What comes next is the origin point for a return trip. Jun Maeda returns to the starting point, end quote. Huh. The website for the project gives a brief teaser for the story. Hina, who awakened as a god, she foresaw the end of the world. She chooses a lone young man who, as her companion, will spend his time with her until the very end. So it sounds like it'll probably be just as cheery as previous Maeda works. Great. Uh, a special prologue program will air on Tokyo MX on May 24th, so this week, and will reveal more information for the anime, so new details will undoubtedly be coming soon, and this is big enough news that I'm sure we will be following that. If you're looking for something a little less emotional and a little more physical, this week's second anime announcement should help. Shueisha announced on Tuesday that Kotaro Shono's World's End Harem sci-fi harem manga is inspiring a television anime. The new series is set to premiere sometime in 2021. The announcement comes in celebration of the manga's four-year anniversary. It launched back in May 2016 on Shueisha's, Shueisha's Shonen Jump Plus website and app. It's also already inspired two spin-off manga series, one set in a fantasy setting, which debuted in 2018, and a spin-off of the spin-off, which will launch next week. So they're clearly pushing this one pretty hard. Apparently, the theme of this series is pretty popular, and you'll probably understand why with a synopsis of the story. The manga is set in a world where the lethal man-killer virus... Hmm has eradicated 99.9% .9 of the world's male population. Protagonist Reito has been in cryogenic sleep for five years and left behind the girl of his dreams. When he wakes, he finds he is now the planet's most valuable resource, a man. Reito and the last four other men are given lives of luxury with only one job, repopulate the planet. You can probably figure out exactly what that demands in a world with five men and millions of women. All Reito wants, however, is to find his one true love. Aw, poor guy. If you're curious how this tragic story will turn out, which I'm sure is the main reason anyone would be interested, look forward to further updates or check out the manga, which is out there. Uh, I've actually come across and heard of this one before, so it definitely has some uh, some interest there. Uh, and some, some, uh, um, some, yeah, popularity. Meanwhile, Toshi, um, let's see here, Toshio Suzuki, producer at Studio Ghibli, held a video chat with Entertainment Weekly this week to discuss the progress of the upcoming films. The good news is that the sweeping delays and hiatuses due to COVID-19 have not affected Ghibli Films' production. How Miyazaki's new film is still quite a ways off. Suzuki commented, quote, We are still hand-drawing everything, but it takes us more time to complete a film because we're drawing more frames. So there are more drawings to draw than before. End quote. He remembers that when creating uh, My Neighbor Totoro in 1988, they had only eight animators and completed the film in eight months. The upcoming How Do You Live is being worked on by 60 animators, but only completes about one minute of animation per month. Must be a lot of frames. Since the film's been in production since 2017, about 36 minutes have been completed so far. Suzuki stated that they hope to complete the film, quote, in the next three years. 
end quote. Yeah. Um, he also commented about the discussion he had with Miyazaki when he decided to make another film after announcing his retirement back in 2013, which was his, what, sixth retirement? Uh, quote, when Miyazaki came back and said that I want to make a film again, I actually said that's not a great idea because he's achieved so much already. You can't come back and do something that you've already done in the past. You have to do something different. One of the ideas that came out from that was, why not spend more time and spend more money? So that's one of the new approaches, end quote. Sounds like we'll have to patiently wait to find out what all that extra time and money will add, if it ever actually gets done. Satoshi Kon, anyone? The studio's second film in production, as announced back in January, comes from Hayao Miyazaki's son, Goro Miyazaki. Suzuki said that this film will be entirely done by computer-generated uh, animation, much like Ronya, the, the, uh, the robber's daughter, and that he couldn't reveal any more details yet. He did, however, give a teaser as to the story's source material. Quote, Goro's film is based on a book or story from England, and it's a story about a very wise girl, end quote. Hmm. Hmm. As the coronavirus shutdown continues canceling events around the world, we hear news of more and more successful online events taking their place. In place of the, 80, uh, the 98th Kamaket Dojinchi Convention, an, onla an online air Kamaket live stream was held this past weekend. The stream ac accumulated a total of 443,000 views across its four day run. The air Kamaket hashtag was used by more than 280,000 unique accounts on Twitter. The event was part of the broader Ganbaro Dojin in initiative, which signal boosts Dojin creators that were originally listed in the Comic Cat 98 catalog. The physical catalog for the event was still sold, and fans were encouraged that purchasing the catalog will help support future Comic Cat events. Physical books by the featured creators were printed and sold through e commerce sites, and these were hi uh, highlighted on the live stream. Kamaket catalogs are traditionally very sought after in general anyway. Hajime Okada, who's worked in the printing business for nearly 30 years, told NHK that the Air Kamaket event greatly boosted their struggling livelihood. Okada said, quote, Printing itself has been on the decline. When Kamaket was cancelled, we were in despair, since it couldn't have come at worse timing. Even though the event didn't happen, I'm grateful that there was a movement to print books. Of course, it can't compare to a real-life event, but the orders have been coming in daily without fizzling out, end quote. So that's definitely good news. Even as the whole world is disrupted, it is a relief to see people finding new ways to continue moving forward. Um, you know, just feel good story. Speaking of online events, two more upcoming events have been announced this week, um, including... This one. UK anime distributor Anime Limited announced this week that it will uh, hold its first Cloud Matsuri event on its YouTube channel on May 30th and 31st. The event is also partnering with Crunchyroll, Atsuko, Manga Entertainment, and Koi Tecmo Europe. The stream will host interviews and talks with four featured guests uh, Science Saru producer uh, Unyong Choi. Studio Orange founder Eiji Inamoto, Polygon Pictures president Shuzo Shiota, and Groundworks company CEO Yasuhiro Kamimura. On both days, the events will run from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time. So, those are some pretty long interviews. Kidding. Um, another little convention you might have heard of has also announced an online event this week. Oops, uh, San Diego Comic-Con revealed on Twitter that they'll be holding Comic-Con at home sometime over the summer. The announcement video lists some of the great features of the event and uh, indeed of all online events, including free parking, comfy chairs, and no lines. Which is true. Now, we haven't been covering every delayed anime or manga in the weekly news as it would take up the whole stream, and then some. But this week brought a couple of delays that really illustrate how unprecedented the current state of the world is. Both the longest-running manga uh, anime series and the longest-running manga announced hiatuses this week. 
the Sazai san anime, which has only delayed episode airings one other time since it began in 1969, and the Gogo 13 manga, which has never been delayed in its entire 52 year history, are both delaying new installments until further notice. Sazai san previously delayed new episodes, uh, new episode production for only one month back in 1975 when the first oil shock led to a sharp rise in production costs. Um, this time, no delay length has been specified and the show will rebroadcast past episodes until staff has decided production is safe again. Fortunately, they have a lot of past episodes to show. The Gogo 13 manga has been running in the monthly big comic magazine since October 1968, but this is the first time it will ever go on hiatus. The staff stated in the official announcement that they had, quote, done everything possible to bring the new book to you, our readers, end quote, but were finally forced to conclude that, you know, working together directly was too unsafe to continue. They concluded, quote, in order to continue to deliver Golgo 13 to our readers, the presence of staff is essential and we made this decision in consideration of the safety of those staff members, end quote. And yes, it's the same mangaka working, you know, uh, heading that all the way through. Manga creator Takao Saito, in fact, released a statement saying that, quote, not to lose to the coronavirus, we've already started to prepare for chapter 600, end quote. Here's hoping these two classics, as well as all the other anime and manga, can continue moving forward soon. Over the last weeks and months, many anime and manga have been pitching in to provide free entertainment to all of us stuck at home. This week, a favorite game is joining in as well. Starting this week, Manga Gamer has set up the Hinamizawa Virus Bundle, which offers the first chapter, chapter of Higurashi When They Cry for free on Steam, as well as steep discounts on the early chapters of the game. Chapters 2 through 4 are available for 75% off until July 14th, and Chapter 1 will be available for free, they say, until the discovery of a COVID-19 vaccine. There's no telling when that will be yet, but let's hope it's sometime in the near future, even if that means we'll only have a limited time to get Higurashi for free. But still, that'll be a good thing. Uh, Manga Gamer's release of the visual novel includes both Japanese and English text, as well as the choices between the game's uh, original sprites or the redesigned versions. Uh, the original creator has said he's not a great artist. So if you've been looking to replay a favorite game or get into it before the new anime adaptation, now is the pretty perfect time. You can't beat free. Now, in Eden of the East, a group of elites is recruited to save the world by the mysterious Mr. Outside. According to a new website that opened this week, Mr. Outside has now decided to extend group membership to everyone in the world. And let's face it, the world could use some saving right now. Participants won't get a special cell phone or a bunch of money like the show's original um, Selesau, but visitors to the site will be granted their own unique Selesau ID number, as well as tips on staying healthy and happy during lockdown. The site also contains Twitter accounts for various series characters and special bonuses that will be unlocked as more fans access the site and engage with characters on Twitter. So far, only a sneak peek has been provided for some specialized downloadable wallpapers. Hopefully, the site will provide some fun and uh, some encouragement for Eden of the East fans and maybe serve as a good reminder that, you know, it really is up to all of us to save the world, or at least do what we can to help. That's it for the news this week. Thanks for watching.